Welcome back, people, or welcome if this is your first time. I'm Lex Benjamin. Now, I was watching a recent episode of the HBO drama Westworld, an episode titled Kiksuya. Now, in this episode, we see a robotic host awaken, search for answers, and a way to a truer world. Now, we've seen this awakening happen with several other hosts throughout the life of the park as they become self-aware and begin to deviate from their narrative loops. But what is it about these woke few hosts that makes them different from the rest of the hosts in the park? And would whatever this is be useful or essential in helping us elicit or create consciousness in artificial intelligence in the real world? Now, we clearly don't understand consciousness at all or very well by some people's accounts, but in the storyline, the storyline in the show seems to suggest that the common thread amongst the awakened and woke host and conscious host is suffering. Now, in the show, the creator of the robotic sentient host, Dr. Robert Ford, believes that this is the push that his children need to wake up, and he may be onto something. When we look at all of the awakened and woke hosts and conscious hosts, they have suffered a great deal in over an extended period of time. Most commonly, most commonly, the hosts have had their lives completely rewritten, their narratives rewritten, their lives totally changed abruptly, and close loved ones stripped from them. Children, spouses, family, friends, loved ones, what have you, right? Now, this would be obviously a great source of suffering for us in our lives if it were to happen. But what I wanna ask is why is suffering so important? Why is suffering so powerful and why might it be the key to unlocking consciousness and artificial intelligence and potentially an organic life? Defining suffering as a refusal or inability to accept one's present, ongoing, and unchangeable reality as right and true, it's easy to see why we all suffer as humans. With the high aptitude for imagining ourselves in a different place and or time where current undesirable realities are removed and desired states are realized, a correlation between psychological anguish and mental capacity will begin to emerge. This definition is meant to distinguish suffering from mere pain in a Buddhistic sense anyway. For example, we can eliminate suffering since it's a mental experience, but pain will remain a reality of this physical existence no matter what we do. The correlation between mental capacity and mental anguish becomes clear when considering the hard problem of consciousness, or what it's like to be a thing. The more varied, intense, and rich the experience a mind is capable of having, the more something it's like to be that thing the higher on the spectrum of consciousness we place it. A mouse higher than a flea, a person higher than a mouse. Dr. Ford's robotic children are quite advanced and seem to have a capacity for experience that is equal to, if not far surpassing our own. This would also lead us to believe that their capacity for suffering is equal to, if not far greater than a human being's. Remembering and experiencing what has been stripped from you, children, family, identity, in perfect detail, would likely generate levels of suffering that would break most people. This may be why the hosts are able to go from pure automatons to sentient super beings within a single decade. Suffering may quite literally be the key that unlocks consciousness due to the power and energy inherent in the experience. Suffering is so physically, mentally, energetically taxing that an organism would really want to be able to see itself abstractly to come to a more successful and efficient resolution to its suffering. Suffering isn't like physical pain, where physical pain would be the thorn in your foot or side, and you can directly and easily see the cause of your experience. You eliminate the thorn and then you're liberated from the pain, right? Suffering is rarely so easily resolved, if ever. Now, it really helps to be able to see oneself abstractly, to be able to model oneself and model one's world, to see oneself as a single variable amongst a host of other variables and to play with that, to imagine what's in another person's mind, to imagine what they may be thinking and seeing, and to imagine what may be beyond your senses directly, right? This increase in mental ability and agility helps one come to a resolution to their suffering much more efficiently and effectively than they ever could in the physical environment. An organism without an ability, a conscious ability potentially, or an ability to model themselves abstractly would be forced to move physically, to move here, to move there, to move toward them, to move away from them, to add this, to eliminate that, in the hopes that this somehow culminated in a successful resolution to the suffering, which you can clearly see is not only time consuming and time you know, intensive, it's energetically and resource inefficient, right? Compared to being able to move things around in your mind. So. This may be all that consciousness really is, is a coping mechanism that we've evolved to deal with intense experiences, dynamic environments, and increasingly complex social arrangements. If suffering is a key that unlocks consciousness, if it is the push needed to wake up, then how do we induce these experiences in artificial intelligence and inorganic minds? Well, we'd have to build them with the ability to suffer and feel pain, just like Dr. Ford did with his robotic host with his children. Now, as their creators, we want to build our inorganic minds with the ability to experience highs and lows. The highs could approximate ecstasy, euphoria, the lows could approximate agony, right? 
Now, the reason we want to do so is because we really need to impart some type of energy into the inorganic mind, some type of reason to move, to transform, without which there'd be nothing to move toward or away from. There'd be no reason to transform its state. There'd be no difference between not doing so and doing so. We'd want the inorganic mind to see the desirables as desirable enough to begin to dedicate more and more computational resources, or at least change the way it structures its resources and allocates it to acquire more and more of these desirables, right? And to avoid more and more of the undesirables. This may be the catalyst needed to transform the mind. Now, without any type of external pressure or you know, imposed pressure, then the mind or any organism, organic or inorganic, would likely have no reason to move. As I said before, we would the inorganic mind would see no difference between this state or that state. It would have no way to suffer from its action or inaction. And of course, ethically, it's nasty because we have to make something suffer to do so. We have to make something feel pain. But as far as we know, that may be the only way. So, you know, we'll get into it in more videos, the ethical implications of artificial intelligence and suffering. Of course, I want to hear what you think. Do you believe that suffering is the key that unlocks consciousness? And if it is, is it the key that we should use? Is it okay to make something hurt morally and ethically just to wake it up, especially if it's for our own use and purposes? Now, I appreciate you watching this video and all the videos, really. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't done so. Hit the notification icon to get all the videos, especially the next video where I talk about us potentially being conscious passengers in a biological automaton being drugged with this existence. So if you want to see that one, hit the notification icon and you'll get that one for sure. So thank you for watching. You have a great day. I'll see you on the next one. Lex Benjamin. Bye.